Greetings, nerdlings, and welcome to Amalgam Nation Presents World of Lorecraft, Faction Craft, The Fias Brotherhood Edition. Okay, before we get started, I just want to say that the lore that I'm about to read to you is purely based around vanilla World of Warcraft up until the beginning of Cataclysm, when changes actually began to take effect. When the Alliance recaptured Stormwind after the Second War, finding the city in ruins, King Terenus ordered a massive reconstruction of the city with the assistance of the Alliance human nations and member races. Many of the exiles and refugees from the First War started to return to their old homeland. The construction was overseen by the House of Nobles, who accepted the help of many artisans and specialists from across the Eastern Kingdoms. The spirit of rebuilding hope and prosperity struck many who decided to volunteer for the great work. However, other less altruistic labourers considered the opportunity of rebuilding as a lucrative government contract, a chance to prove their craftsmanship and start anew. Eager to forge new lives, these craftsmen travelled to Stormwind, many bringing their families with them at great expense. When the rebuilding was completed, many craftsmen demanded payment for their labour. Blacksmiths, engineers, labourers and stonemasons marched together to the new keep to request payment for their services. But there was nothing left to pay them with. The remainder of the funds having been spent in order to expand Stormwind's military presence into the surrounding regions. To solve the problem, the nobles decided to expel the labourers and artisans from the rebuilt kingdom. The nobles had their new city, and those that built it were left broken and alone, and feeling betrayed and disillusioned with the alliance, the group turned to the head of the stonemasons, Edwin Van Cleef, for leadership. Van Cleef, master engineer and former assassin under Master Matthias Shaw, then founded the Defias Brotherhood. Ostensibly standing for freedom and justice, they built a base of operations in the dead mines of Westfall, and Van Cleef began plotting his revenge against a kingdom that had... Anyone with a sword and a cog tattoo can declare himself or herself part of the Defias Brotherhood and begin robbing travelling merchants. Yet the Brotherhood hears of such activity quickly, long before even the Stormwind Guard and new self-initiates soon find themselves visited by a member who instructs them in the ways of the Brotherhood. If the Initiate agrees, he is officially allowed to join the Defias Brotherhood. If an Initiate proves disagreeable, he is paid a second, quieter visit shortly thereafter by a shadowy form wielding a pneumatic crossbow. Most Initiates quickly join one of the Brotherhood's many established raiding parties. These groups are generally known as bands, though they often adopt more colourful nicknames from the South Path Raiders to the Rhodes. In some cases, as with Relo's Leafwalkers, a band is named after its leader, called a captain in the Brotherhood. Captains lead and control their bands with force and cunning, and most experienced captains bear scars, demonstrating their ability to withstand challenges by young upstarts. Captains plan the raids of their bands, and they are responsible for supplying their bands with not only food and shelter, but also training in the art of the ambush and the technology that gives the Brotherhood an edge. Initiates interested in becoming full Defias renegades quickly become familiar with the requirements described for the prestige class as their instructors put them through a Captains and their bands are given free reign by the Brotherhood's leadership to steal, pillage, harass and harry as often as they like, and as long as they can avoid open conflict with the troops of the Stormwind Guard and the People's Militia. Occasionally, however, higher-ranking members of the Brotherhood are sent out with knife squads to warn bands who go too far. In the words of Edwin Van Cleef, a dead traveller carries no treasure and a ruined village has no plunder. The Brotherhood requires that captains bring a quarter of all loot to Moonbrook, where it helps fund the research and the activities of Van Cleef and the Brotherhood's leadership. In return, the Brotherhood gives captains access to the technological advances made in the labs within their hidden headquarters. 
They are known for attacking caravans and travellers across central and western Nazareth. In Westfall, they are known for brazenly and openly looting farms and village merchants. Bands of the Defias Brotherhood are found mainly in Westfall and Elwyn Forest, though they occasionally range into Duskwood and other parts of northern Nazareth. The few who have managed to track them so far believe that the Brotherhood works out of the remote town of Moonbrook in southern Westfall, yet its true headquarters is actually nearby in an underground fortress constructed in the labyrinthine dead mines. Many consider the Defias Brotherhood just a band of bullies and brigands, but they underestimate its military capabilities. While the Brotherhood employs mercenaries to bolster its ranks, it trains and fields its own forces, preparing for the day when it acts to disrupt all trade with Stormwind. The Brotherhood's force serves two purposes. Firstly, it is a highly mobile raiding force, capable of quickly attacking a caravan, seizing its most valuable goods and destroying the remainder. Secondly, it is a more conventional attack force that can launch attacks on alliance garrisons and forts. To achieve these purposes, a typical Defias unit emphasizes mobility, stealth and ambush tactics, as well as toughness. The Brotherhood is not heavy on magical support. However, within the Deadmines, Magi learn to master a deadly arsenal of spells. Also, Defias Tinkers, trained by some of the most fiendish goblin mines, devise automatons and steam armor suits whose raw power can provide backup for their less armored human warriors. The next major engagement between the Brotherhood and the unsuspecting Alliance may hold a few surprises. The two major units of the Defias Brotherhood are bandits who serve as cannon fodder and renegades who are somewhat tougher. Stronger field units, which are given names like Highwayman and Pillager, tend to be more skilled as warriors than as rogues. The Defias Brotherhood pretends to embody noble ideals in the service of a just cause, but it's a facade. The presence of bandits among them proves the lie. The Highwaymen stalk the roads of Westfall, especially at night, exacting a toll on anyone who doesn't support the Brotherhood's efforts. Bandits are the lowest of the low in the Brotherhood's ranks, and when the battle horn sounds, they take the front ranks. They group together for close support, preferring to fight back to back in a mob, and are often the first to flee the field when the tide turns against them. The Defias Brotherhood rarely fields an army of regular troops, as Van Cleef and the other commanders prefer its members to master a wider variety of skills than those of a pure soldier. The Defias Renegade, often called a thug or brigand, is the gold standard of the Defias operatives, a decent fighter and a skilled spy wrapped in one strong sneaky package. Members of the Defias Brotherhood take pride in their affiliation. They wear red bandanas over their faces to display their allegiance and to hide their identities. They are lightly armed and armoured, employing short swords or long swords and hiding a dagger beneath the folds of their cloaks. In situations where they are expecting trouble, they command a small cadre of mercenary soldiers or defias bandits and use them as buffers to protect themselves from the enemy. Renegades of the Defias Brotherhood tend to be exceptionally skilled, swift of foot and mind, and mechanically adept. They also tend to feel alienated from society at large, and are often looking for some sort of revenge, even if they don't know how or against whom. As well, they need to be able to show enough initiative to seek out and join the Brotherhood of their own free will that once inside they are expected to follow orders within the wide borders of freebooting and banditry. The majority of the renegades are human, with a small portion of dwarves from Kazmodan in the south and a few high elves upset at the army of Stormwind for refusing to march north and retake all of Quelkalas. Half elves, half orcs, and others who feel outcast from their own races have also banded together with the Defias bands and become renegades. Some legends told that the Defias Brotherhood was founded by a group of noblemen who once stood for freedom. 
Having long forsaken those noble virtues on which their brotherhood was founded, the mysterious Defias faction is now composed of thieves, bandits and vicious mercenaries. This vile group is determined to wreak havoc upon and ultimately destroy the House of Nobles in Stormwind City. Convinced that the nobles are corrupt and villainous, the Defias Brotherhood has waged an underground war in a quest to rid the land of their hated enemies. It is also known that groups of gnolls, kobolds, and even goblins each help the Defias Brotherhood in their own particular ways. For example, goblins built harvest golems at the behest of the Defias Brotherhood to scare off the local inhabitants of Westfall allowing the Defias to run their smuggling operations with greater impunity. The Harvest Golems have done that job well, eliciting terror in anyone foolish enough to roam alone in the fallow fields of Westfall. Now in Westfall, only the people's militia stand in the way of the Defias operations, which seemingly become more... The Defias have taken over parts of Elwyn Forest, Duskwood, Westfall, and have recently caused significant problems in the stockades. They are a dangerous group with infiltrators in the highest circles of Stormwind nobles and a sinister single-mindedness in the execution of their illegal trading. Wiley the Black in Lakeshire speculates that the Defias have even begun work on a weapon of mass destruction, a hypothetical weapon of unknown origins and power. However, the existence or non-existence of such a weapon is not expected to affect any unilateral action that may be taken against the Defias by bands of adventurers. That weapon is probably a reference to the huge juggernaut battleship that is in construction in the Dead Mines. After all, the entire Dead Mines are a huge construction yard for the ship. It is also revealed in some lower mid-level quests such as the missing diplomat quest chain that the Defias have staged a worldwide plot related to the ten-year-old king of Stormwind, Anduin Rin. Bran warns fellow travellers to make sure their coins are not scratched. This is due to the Defias Brotherhood taking a liking to marrying the face of the king to produce what are known as cross-eyed coins. These coins have been declared illegal. It is known that the Defias wear face masks. To a certain degree, the material of said face masks reveals a Defias member's rank within the Brotherhood. A popular item for rogues is the Red Defias Mask, a mask that can drop off of any Defias mob in Westfall, Duskwood, the Dead Mines, or the Stockade. It is a bind-on-pickup item that can only be worn by rogues. Because it can be equipped by low-level characters before most other headgear, Many lower level rogues actively seek this item for its look, despite the fact that it provides no armour or stats. Curiously, the highest drop rate for the mask seems to be off the grave robbers in Duskwood, the only mobs who drop the mask that are not masked themselves. Despite the near total annihilation of the Defias leadership, including Edwin Van Cleef, the Defias made a resurgence in World of Warcraft Cataclysm. Van Cleef's daughter Vanessa arose to take the leadership of the Defias and take vengeance on Stormwind for assassinating her father. Sentinel Hill is attacked in the process of this and many homeless join the Defias. It's curious to note that despite the resurgence of the Defias Brotherhood in Cataclysm, there are not many Defias characters in the Dead Mines or Westfall anymore. They are sparse and very rare these days. But you can still find some and they can still drop the Defias mask. Thank you for watching and as always remember, play the game and game to play.